What is he looking at? All the people. He just gets so much joy seeing like the facility in use. <laughs> And that was gross. Yeah. <laughs> Nasty. Window is dirty. Yeah. Why? Do I need to trim my nose there? <laughs> yeah. Are you looking at yours later? Today is Thursday, August 5th. We've just wrapped up our surgery morning or our surgeries uh, today here at FenVet. We had a pretty standard surgery morning. We typically do surgeries three out of five days of the week. So we started off with doing a younger, small to medium sized dog, Spay. She was otherwise healthy, no major concerns on blood work. The owner wanted to chat about whether or not we wanted to do an ovario hysterectomy and an, or an ovarioectomy. Right now at FemVet, we've been doing ovario hysterectomies. An ovario hysterectomy is where we remove the ovaries and the uterus. This is more traditional and I'd say this is in the past 50 years, this is probably what most uh, veterinarians in North America have been trained to do. On the other hand, there's the ovariectomy, which is just removing the ovaries. Now, more current research coming out is showing that there's not a huge difference in terms of risks associated with doing both procedures. So they're both removing the ovaries, which prevents the dog from getting, of going into heat, getting pregnant. And also, they both reduce the risk of pyometras or uterine infections, as well as the risk of getting mammary cancer. In terms of which one to do, both have pretty major benefits, um, but the advantage of doing an ovariectomy is that they, you do typically make a smaller incision since we don't have to remove the whole uterus as well. And sometimes this can, once experienced, speed up your surgical time. So less, less tissue trauma, less time in surgery, um, usually ends up being a little bit quicker recovery. However, the ovarian hysterectomies, we don't see uh, major side effects either. This owner was just uh, curious about which one was which, so I discussed that with her and she decided to go ahead with the ovariectomy. So we just removed the ovaries on the first dog. We give them a painkiller and a sedative. Um, if we give them the painkiller to start, there's less wind up pain afterwards. Mm. And the anesthetic just helps um, settle them so that we can place the catheter with less stress. I'm gonna pretty much for the ovariectomy do my incision in a very similar spot, just like a tiny bit, maybe more cranial, and can keep it nice and small. Just the exact same, found the linea alba, this little white line that you probably can't see, but it's just running where my clamp is. I'm gonna stick my scalpel in, get in, now I'm inside. And I'll use my spay hook. Make sure I go right along the body wall. See if we'll get what I want. Nope. Usually I can tell based on tension on the spay hook whether or not I have the ovary. Switch to the other side. Sometimes one side's easier than the other. Nope. This is promising. Promising. There it is. Well, that's the uterus at least. And there's our ovary. And our vasculature all going to it. So now I'm just tying on the other side of the ovary just to make sure that none of the uterine vessels bleed. Some of the other advantages of the ovariectomy from what I was reading in different studies is that you don't have to put as much uh, tension and pressure on the uterine body. So you typically don't have as much bleeding in the abdomen. You also can make your incision smaller. You also, there's less of a risk of actually leaving pieces of the ovary in it because you're able to get better exposure of the ovary. This tiny little thing on each end of my thumb, that's the ovary. So I have lots of tissue on both sides so that I know that I got the entire ovary these back into the abdomen. So my pedicle and then my uterus. So now the other side, uterine body, ovary, and then we do the same thing again. 
I'm just checking to make sure that there's no bleeding, which there's not. So now we'll close. This is Layla. Layla's just a little bit sore. She's five years old and she's just been, not quite been herself. So we're gonna do some blood work. And uh, she was rescued and she was abused. So uh, she's been doing great. Do you need more blood? I think she's good. Got enough? I got enough, okay. The bare minimum. So we're just gonna do blood work and just see what's going on. On our next spay, she was still a younger spay. However, she was a little bit obese, so it made it trickier. She also had an umbilical hernia. So because there's a hernia, I'm gonna start a lot more cranial so that I can fix the hernia too. It's not much of a hernia. Normally I do more of an elliptical incision, but there's not much, everything's tucked back in. It's a, like a hole and they can push like intestines and stuff through. So the risk is, is if it starts to close or if the intestines are full and they drop through, then it can cause uh, issues with like strangulation of the intestine. So we always want to close those as soon as we can, like when they're young, to make sure that it doesn't cause any issues in the future. The hernia is most likely from like, just from birth, right? Just never really closing. Yeah, yet. just not closing properly. Mm -hmm. It is um, most like considered genetic. So if we have a dog with a hernia, we don't want to be breeding that dog mm -hmm. in the future. Being more overweight, there's like more fat in the broad le ligament, there's more fat in your pedicle, so like your sutures aren't as, aren't able to like tie as tight, um, so it's uh, definitely not a good thing to be spaying a fat dog. The fat just makes it a little bit harder to tie ligatures down to make sure that we get really good hemostasis or um, blood uh, occluding on our on our ties. After you spay or neuter your pet, their metabolism is decreased by 25%. So it's on our discharge instructions that they should be fed appropriately to accommodate that. If you keep feeding them the same way um, after they're spayed, they often will gain weight if their exercise isn't adequate. All the bags of dog and cat food in the pet stores and stuff, the feeding guides on the back are based on animals who are intact. So mm -hmm. in general, the feeding guide is overfeeding our sterilized animals. We finished off um, fixing the hernia by just closing the entire body wall We'd freshened that tissue initially by removing the body wall so it does heal and close over and the hernia won't happen again. Finally, we moved on to a small dog dental. This dog had very severe dental disease. I'm gonna take x-rays first. So I think most of the upper teeth will be extracted. The lower teeth, I think, are mostly going to stay. So I'm just gonna clean them all and then Carling will come and evaluate. A lot of the teeth in this dental were so infected. There was a lot of pathology. There was abscesses underneath the tooth. Those abscesses broke down the periodontal ligament, which is that main attachment for the tooth to stay in place. The bone around had also been eaten away by the abscesses and the bacteria that are invading into the deeper layers of the tissue. So this is all pus, this, that that I can wash away is all pus. This tooth should not be moving like it is. You can see that it is like wiggly. And then this is what we call calculus. So it's the plaque and tartar that has now calcified. Her jaw chatters on some of the teeth, which is a sign of pain. Block should help that. And then removing the teeth ultimately removes the source of the pain. So she's doing that under anesthetic. With us just cleaning, we can only imagine that her eating would cause the same reaction. And so that's why animals with dental pain are reluctant to eat because it truly does hurt. And the chain of events starts. Oh, there's like this nasty abscess. It's Thing. horrific. 
So she has an oral nasal fistula Do you want more? from the infection. So notice how that comes out her nose. That's uh, not ideal. So we do want to put her on antibiotics while that heals. Will that seal up? Yeah, it should eventually. Hopefully after recovery, we should see um, a little bit more energy, more willingness to eat. They do sometimes really change in terms of their behavior and their energy. Lots of people will be like, I have a different dog. So that can be pretty cool. All is planned. <laughs> Nothing exciting. Standard dental, but nasty. So once we finished the dental, um, I think she has her whole right bottom arcade and then uh, just one other tooth in her mouth. Otherwise, majority of her teeth are gone.